Chief Reverend Venerable Dr. K. Sri Damananda, Nayaka Mahathira, Venerable Kain, and Board of Santavana Forest Hermitage Toran, Venerable Pikus and Pikunis, Organizing Chairman Mr. Ui Siok Tong, Mr. Lim Yoki, Chairman of KK Tseying Buddhism Research Society, Mr. Ng Kim Ching, Chairman of Santavana Forest Hermitage Toran, Dhamma Brothers and Sisters, Friends, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome and good evening to all of you, especially to our distinguished speaker for this evening, the Venerable Dr. K. Sri Damananda, who is also affectionately known as Chief Reverend among the Buddhist fraternity. To those who have attended similar talks by Chief Reverend last August, we are happy to see you all again and welcome back. We are indeed very happy, honoured and fortunate that Chief Reverend has again compassionately consented to return to Sabah for another two public talks in Kodakinabalu. This is despite the difficulty Chief Reverend is having with his vocal cords. The theme for the two public talks is religious understanding and tolerance for world peace, which intends to dispel any misunderstanding on the noble teachings of the Buddha and to promote human values and inter-religious harmony among people of different religious backgrounds. Thus, tonight, the Chief Reverend will speak to us on why do we need a religion. Chief Reverend will speak on the Buddhist concept of God tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. in this hall. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Reverend is no stranger and has been to Sabah on several occasions over the last two decades. Permit me, Venerable Sir, to give a brief introduction of your good self to those who are interested to know more about you and your work. Chief Baron was ordained as a novice monk in Kirindi Vihara at the age of 12 and given the name Dhammananda, which means one who experiences happiness through the Dharma or Buddha's teaching. At age 22, Chief Reverend received his higher ordination, Upa Sampada. Chief Reverend holds numerous diplomas, master's degrees, and honorary doctorate degrees in linguistic philosophy, Pali, Sanskrit, Sinhalese, and Indian philosophy from the following universities. The Dharma Ryan Buddhist University and University of Oriental Studies in USA, the Pali and Buddhist University of Sri Lanka, Nalanda University and Benares Hindu University in India, and Maha Chulalongkorn University in Thailand. Chief Reverend is the Senior Religious Advisor for the World Buddhist Sangha Council. Chief Reverend is also the Patron and Religious Advisor to numerous Buddhist organizations in Malaysia, including being the religious advisor for the Buddhist Missionary Society in Breakfields, Kuala Lumpur, and Buddhist Foundation for Sabah and Federal Territory of Labuan. Chief Reverend strongly subscribes to interfaith activities. In the 1960s, Chief Reverend was active in the Malaysian inter-religious organization, which aimed to promote religious harmony among Malaysians of various religious denominations, in 1984, together with a few prominent co-religionists, Chief Reverend helped to establish the Consultative Council on Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, and Sikhism. Besides encouraging greater dialogue among the non-Islamic religionists in Malaysia, the Council also presents the views of non-Muslim communities to the government. As a senior leader in the Council, he discusses and organizes dialogue sessions with leaders of other religious groups in the country. For his invaluable services and contributions toward promoting interreligious understanding and tolerance in Malaysia, Chief Reverend was awarded the Johan Setia Makota, JSM, by His Majesty, the young Diputuan Agong Sultan Aslan Shah in 1991. Chief Reverend also received numerous awards in recognition of his work 
And one of them is the title of Aga Maha Pandita from Myanmar, which is a title given to a great learned person. Chief Reverend is a much sought after speaker and has selflessly and tirelessly dedicated most of his life to propagating the Dharma freely and indiscriminately, regardless of race, religion, or sex. Chief Reverend has written more than 55 books and numerous articles on Buddhism, which are very popular and much read in many parts of the world. Many who, have, who had read Chief Reverend's books found great benefits through the application of the Buddha's teachings, which were simply and clearly explained and illustrated with current day examples by Chief Reverend. Chief Reverend deliberately approached many of his writings in a manner easily understood by the laity. I'm sure many of you are sitting here anxiously for me, waiting for me to shut up. So that Chief Reverend can commence his talk tonight. Venerable monks and venerable nuns, dear devotees. First of all, I had to express my sincere gratitude for having invited me to come and deliver another talk in this year. I cannot guarantee for my voice. Two days ago I have completely lost my voice. I was about to telephone here to cancel this talk. Then I went to see a doctor. Well, he gave me a few antibiotics and a few tablets. Now voice is coming up slowly, but I cannot guarantee. Please forgive me. Well, the topics that we are going to discuss tonight, why do we need a religion? We means humans. Because among the 31 groups of different kinds of living beings in this universe, only human beings have a religion. Others have no religion at all. That is why it is important. The Buddha has categorized the whole universe into 31 groups of living beings. Hell, a spirit, ghost, animals, humans are then divine beings, six kinds. Again, higher forms of divine being at Brahma, 16 kinds. Again, life without a physical body. And physical body without active mind. Uh, these are the 31 groups. So amongst those 31 groups, only human beings have a religion. What is the meaning of this word religion? It is not an English word. It is a Latin word. Original word is religio. Means binding. But when they introduced this as an English word, religion, they int interpreted binding to God. Now worshipping, praying to God, there are so many other interpretations. But at the beginning, the original word is only for binding. The word religion and Buddhism. People always ask, is Buddhism a religion? The word religion and Buddhism. People always ask, 
if Buddhism a religion, if the meaning of that word binding to God, then we cannot say Buddhism is not a religion. If they can interpret in this way, religion means a noble way of life for people to find out their final salvation, and then we can accept Buddhism also as a religion. The word used by the Buddha is dharma, not religion. Of course, Buddha did not speak English. He used the word dharma. Now that word is very meaningful, better than the word English, I mean the religion. He said, Paturaho si magade supubbe dhammo asuddho samalehi chintito. After gaining his enlightenment, he said like this. This dharma that I understood is not a new dharma or not a new religion. This dharma existed long ago. But people have misinterpreted, polluted, forgotten. Therefore, the dharma is not existing in a human's mind. Dharma exists, but not existing in the human's mind. That is why the Buddhas will appear from time to time to reveal, to remind the human qualities, human values, human intelligence, and how to practice a religion with human dignity without becoming slaves either to God or to Buddha or religion. So he introduced a noble way of life as dharma or as religion for us to practice without suffering in the name of our religion without torturing physical body because of our religion and without enslaving to the sensual pressure in this world but by maintaining the dignity by giving due credit to our intelligence uh, that is Buddhism. Now the most important point is why do we need why only human beings maintain this religion? Because of human intelligence. This intelligence we cannot find in any other living beings. Hell, the spirit, ghost, animals, and devas, brahma, so-called divine beings also do not have this human intelligence. That is why only a human being can become a Buddha. But God cannot become a Buddha. That intelligence is not there. When human beings developed, cultivate, purified the mind, then gain the enlightenment. It is called Buddhahood. Only human beings can do that. Human mind is very advanced. It has taken, according to scientific discoveries, more than four million years to develop this human mind up to this extent and the formations of physical body in this manner. They say at least four million years. Therefore the belief that people maintain human life is 
created by God at once is rejected by the intellectuals. Recently, Pope John, he is the living God on this earth for Catholics. He made an announcement that appeared in the State Times. I got the paper cutting. He said, human beings were not created by the God. Who says? Pope. They come into existence due to gradual development of evolution. When the child's uh, uh, theory of evolution, Charles Darwin, introduced this evolution, they had a very big battle for nearly 100 years not to accept this evolution. Finally, they came to know intellectuals all over the world accepted that it is true. That is why Pope had to announce human beings were not created by a God. They come into existence due to evolution. So, the intelligence that we maintain today is so advanced. One man's mind is strong enough to destroy the whole world today. There is no another living being who can do that. Scientific discoveries by using their independent intelligence without depending on God or without depending on religion, by using only their intellect, certain things that they have discovered, we cannot imagine by using our normal mind. The nuclear weapons that they have discovered and produced, they say, all those nuclear weapons produced by these people, if dumped together and blast at once, within half an hour, the whole world turned into ashes. Whose work is done? Human mind. Not only that, moon also will be affected. Uh, this is the danger of the human mind if it is not diverted, guided, trained properly. Albert Einstein very highly intellectual scientist, everybody respect him. He made two statements. Science without religion is blind. Religion without science is lame or crippled. Science without religion they develop and develop, nobody to guide them, <laughs> is blind. Religion without science is lame or crippled. Science without religion, they develop and develop, nobody to guide them. Finally, they produce atom bomb, now nuclear weapons completely can ruin the whole world. Human intelligence that they misused and abused because no proper guidance from religion.
on the other hand religion without science he says lame not active ah uh, that is why pope decided to welcome scientific discoveries into religion otherwise there will be no future for such religion in this world again albert einstein says according to our scientific education in time to come if religion is needed only buddhism can stand he was not a buddhist he has no religion but by using his intelligence he said like this because religion depend or based on belief but science they discover through experiment no belief there so the belief that people maintain according to their respective religions will be affected very badly because of scientific discoveries now in the west nearly 50% dropped they are not christian anymore 50% every western country many of them remains as free thinkers some of them approach buddhism in england buddhism is the second religion in that country there are 400 buddhist centers in england there are 2000 buddhist centers in america fast growing religion why the religion that appeal to intellectuals mind who have developed their scientific knowledge there is nothing for them to disagree with the teachings of the buddha according to their discovery so far they could not utter even one word against the teachings of the buddha scientific so why religion is needed the human beings can become the most cruel the most wicked the most cunning the most selfish living being in this universe others cannot develop those uh mental attitudes up to such extent on the other hand only human beings can cultivate sympathy kindness compassion honesty patience tolerance harmony unity understanding religion is important to cultivate these good qualities in that human mind otherwise religion does not mean or the purpose of religion is not for us to worship and pray and to perform all these rites and rituals and ceremonies and burning all sort of things in the name of religion there is no religion there we cannot say those who pray so many times a day are religious people we cannot say those who spend millions of dollars for rites and rituals in the name of religion that they are religious people from the buddhist point of view 
when the Buddha was about to pass away, so many people assembled with flowers to offer and pay respect. The disciple Venerable Anand advised them not to come and disturb the Buddha at this moment. The Buddha overheard, then asked, Ananda, why? What is happening? Then he told, there are so many people who are waiting to come and offer flowers and pay respect to you, having heard that you are going to pass away. You know what the Buddha said? Ask them to go back. They cannot pay respect to the Buddha by offering flowers and by worshipping. Ask them to go back and practice at least one of the advices given by the Buddha. Uh, then they really respect the Buddha. Now here you can understand who the Buddha is. He never asked anybody to come and pray and worship. Never. One of the disciples, every day, come in front of the Buddha and watching, just like watching television. So the Buddha, his name is Vakkali. Vakkali, what are you doing here? Then he said, Venerable Sir, when I look at your serenity, features, complexion, gives me a lot of happiness. Then what the Buddha say in his own language? Kinte vakkali imina putikayen dugandhen sariren. Vakkali, by watching this dirty, filthy, impermanent, physical body, what do you gain? Nothing. You entertain your emotion. You never gain knowledge or understanding or purity just because you enjoy by entertaining your emotion. Then he said, Yo dhammang pasati so mang pasati. One who sees the dharma taught by me through this dharma, they can see the Buddha, not through the physical body. Physical body is not the Buddha. There is no difference whatsoever. Your physical body and my physical body and the physical body of the Buddha, there is no difference. Enlightenment is not in the physical body. Uh, that is why he said, by watching this body, what do you gain? But if we can understand what the Buddha taught, then you can see the... <laughs> what do you gain? But if we can understand what the Buddha taught, then you can see the real Buddha in your mind. You create the real Buddha in your mind. Therefore, don't depend on this physical body. So he did not encourage even to respect, to worship his physical body. So, the main purpose is to cultivate, to develop, to purify the mind. Not worshipping and praying and performing all sorts of rites and rituals. One day, when the Buddha was going somewhere, he met a Brahmin. Brahmin means Brahmana. Uh, Hindu priests and teachers and uh, they are the high caste people in India. He met the Buddha. He could not understand 
actually whether this is a human being. Because he has never seen such human figure. He approached the Buddha and asked, May I know whether you are a god? The Buddha says, No, no, I am not a god. Many others try to say they are God or son of God. The Buddha says, no, I am not a God. Then he asked, any other form of supernatural living being? He said, no, I am very natural. <laughs> then he asked, in that case, are you an ordinary human being? The Buddha says, no. Now confusing, in his mind, who this man is. Then directly, then who are you? The Buddha gave the answer. This self-introduction is very important for us to understand who the Buddha is. Now, if, if anybody come and ask, you worship, you believe, you follow the Buddha. Can you tell me actually who this Buddha is? Can you explain? You may say something, but you do not know who the Buddha is. Uh, he introduced himself in this way. Abhinyayang abhinyatam. I understood everything that which exists in this world. How did he do that? Not within one lifetime. He went on developing, cultivating his mind, life after life, such a long period. Develop the mind up to the maximum level. Uh, that is why he say, I understood everything that exists in this world. Bhavetabhancha bhavita. I have practiced all the great qualities, virtues, principles and morals and anything which is good. I have practiced. Pahatabhang pahinang me. I have uprooted or eradicated all the evil thoughts, words and actions. Completely eradicate. Now, we can understand the difficulty. In our case, very minor impurity in our mind. Jealousy. We know very well we never gain anything by harboring jealousy. But we cannot drop it. We maintain this jealousy in our mind. And what about anger? What about greed? What about selfishness? He could manage to drop one by one, one by one, everything until he completely purified the mind. Tasma buddhosmi brahmana. Therefore, I am not a god. Not a supernatural living being, not an ordinary man. I am the Buddha. Ah, this is the meaning of the word Buddha. I repeat, one who has understood this knowledge is not given by God. Through his own effort, life after life, he went on developing and developing. He understood. Then he practiced all the great qualities, virtues, principles, and morals. Then he eradicated all the evil thoughts, words, action. Then he gained enlightenment. This word enlightenment very loosely we use. The real meaning of enlightenment is this. One who understood everything, one who cultivated all the great qualities, virtues, one who has eradicated all the evil, wicked, harmful things, 
and then gain the enlightenment. Uh, this is the real meaning of the Buddha. We follow his guidance, advice given by the Buddha, not as religious law, not as commandment, not because of punishment, but by knowing why these things are bad why these things are good not because God revealed to us these things are bad don't do otherwise I punish you these things are good you must do otherwise I cannot take you to heaven there is no such teaching in Buddhism recently I was invited to give a Buddhist talk in a Catholic church Occasionally they invite us, and we invite them also. After my talk, somebody asked this question. You say, Buddha says like this, and we say, Jesus says like this. Who is correct? <laughs> then I told him, my dear friend, you can forget your Jesus. I can forget the Buddha. Use our common sense. Use our common sense, then we can understand who is right, who is wrong, what is right, what is wrong. Example. The Buddha says we should not steal. Jesus says thou shalt not steal. Do you think without Buddha, without Jesus, we cannot understand that stealing is bad? Why do not you depend on them to understand that it is bad? That is the Buddha's way of teaching. Through your own experience, through your understanding, you will come to know why it is bad. Example, he says, I advise you not to kill, not to destroy other living beings. If you can understand why it is bad, uh, then when another person come and try to kill you, how do you feel? That experience, then when another person come and try to kill you how do you feel that experience is enough for you to understand why it is bad not necessary to say well, Buddha says we should not kill God says we should not kill that is children's language understanding people when, when maturity is there in our mind, sense of reasoning we had to develop. Many religions do not allow people to use their sense of reasoning. You have no argument. This is given by the God. Whether you like or not, whether you can understand or not, your duty is to accept it. Nothing to think must accept what the Buddha says. Don't accept anything what I said. Thinking Buddha is a great man. You never learn anything. You depend on Buddha, but you never learn anything. You have to think, you have to use your sense of reasoning, then you can understand. We have a thinking mind. Why we are called Manushya? Do you know the meaning? We, human beings, are called Manushya in so many languages. It's a Sanskrit word. Very meaningful word. Mana means mind. 
Manusta means one who can raise, develop, cultivate that mind. That living being is called Manusya. But other living beings, they too have a mind for their survival. They can use their mind to find out their food, their shelter, to protect their life and little bit of sensual pleasure. They cannot extend their mind further. Limited only for these things. It is mentioned very clearly in Sanskrit language. Ahara nidra bhaya maithunancha samanya metat pasubhirnarana. Eating, sleeping, self protection, and what you call sexual pleasure. These four things are common to every living being in this world. With the big or small makes no difference. Every creature, tiniest creature, also experience eating, sleeping or relaxing or fighting to protect their life and sexual pleasure. If human beings also spend their life only for these four things, is there any difference between humans and animals? We think we are superior, we are more advanced, we are so intelligent. Have we got anything to prove that we are higher than animals? Yes, there is something. We have something which they haven't got. Dharmo hite sang adhiko visesa. Just now I mentioned. We have dharma. Now we say religion. Uh, this we can find only human's mind. Not in others' mind. Uh, this is extraordinary characteristic that human beings have. But our greed, our selfishness, our cunningness completely spoiled our intelligence. They dominate our mind and uh, then we forget we are humans. Humane qualities, human values, human intelligence, servant. When greed, selfishness, hatred appear in the mind. Again, there is another point. Among those 31 group of living beings, only human beings tell lies. Yes. Others do not know how to tell lies. That is cunningness. How much this cunningness is developed in our mind to twist and turn. I can tell you a very simple story, but not very pleasant one. Please forgive me. A very young housewife in the kitchen, there was a young boy also in that house. This young wife and this young boy were kissing in the kitchen. Husband saw this. Came and asked, what are you doing? You know, at once, this lady said, do you know, every day I keep some durian here in this bottle. I can see two, three pieces are missing every day. When I ask this boy whether he take, he says no. 
Today I want you to smell his mouth. <laughs> Can you imagine? Only one second to create that story. This is the nature of the human mind. Is there anybody else who can do that in this world? <laughs> See how clever we are. So, we can twist and turn our mind and can tell lies. It is mentioned. When the Buddha, as a Bodhisattva, before gaining enlightenment, he is called Bodhisattva. Anybody who is working for gaining enlightenment is called Bodhisattva. Occasionally, he has violated certain precepts as a worldly person. But he upheld one particular precept not to violate that. What is that? Telling lies. He tried his best not to break this. After gaining enlightenment, the word the Buddha has said came out from his holy sacred mouth. The words are still effective. Last 2,500 years, People are, have been experiencing what sort of effect they had either by reciting or listening. The word come out from the Buddha's mouth. Same language. Disciples maintain the same language, the same word that the Buddha has spoken for 45 years. Obtain the same language, the same word that the Buddha has spoken for 45 years. So these words are very effective because you are the only human beings on this earth who never utter the lie. Now these are the, the special characteristics of the Buddha that people do not know. Some people say, when they say you are worshipping the Buddha, you say you are worshipping the devil. You see how narrow and how, what do you call, low mentality that they have to say like this. You are worshipping the devil. Now, when we recite the precept, five precepts, before we start religious service, it is the customary religious practice. First, observe the five precepts. Now then continue the religious service. Panati Pata Veramani Sikapadam Samadhyami Adinadana Veramani Sikapadam Ami Sumichachara Veramani Sikapadam Musavada Veramani Sikapadam Sura Mere Majapamada Tana Veramani Sikapadam Five. I try my best not to kill, not to steal, not to have sexual misconduct, not to tell lies, not to take intoxicating drinks or drugs. These are the five basic religious principles for every Buddhist to observe. Do you know, in every religion, there are few basic religious principles. Now, Islam, they have five pillars. Belief in God, praying, fasting, 
charity, pilgrimage to Holy Land. Five. These are the five pillars in Islam. Christianity, they have ten commandments. So the Buddhists observe these five principles. Sikha Padang are these the most important words there. I try to train my mind. Sikha Pad, I try to train my mind when that bad thought appears in my mind not to do this. Uh, this is the Buddhist, not, or oh, this is given by the God, this is given by the Buddha, this is given by so and so, no. I train my mind not to do that. Knowing that it is bad, it is wicked, it is cruel, it is harmful, it is dangerous. I train my mind not to do that. Uh, that is the Buddhist principle. We cannot say, oh, I cannot do that because Buddha says I cannot do it. <laughs> I cannot eat this because Buddha says we cannot do it. This is small children's language. Children say, Papa say, I cannot go there, if I go there, he will beat me. <laughs> Mama, Mommy say, I cannot eat this, he will beat me. The same language. We are adults. We have maturity. We have sense of reasoning in our mind. Without misusing, abusing, without following anything blindly, use your common sense, my dear friend. Not necessary to have religious labels. Whether we are Buddhists or Christians or Hindus or Muslims, those labels are not important. Religion is not in their labels. That is why the whole world today is a battlefield because of religion. Religious label, not religious principles. I want to introduce my religion, egoism, my religion, our religion, but not religion. Two religions introduce the same principles, but one religion tried to convert this into the other religion. But the same principle, two labels. So they are fighting for this label. They bring religion into the battlefield to justify, oh, it is our religion. They have polluted completely purity of religion. They try to show worshipping, praying so many times a day, they are religious. But their cruelty, anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will, enmity, all the evil forces are boiling in their mind. Where is religion? What is the purpose of religion? Religion is for us to train our mind to live peacefully, without harming, without disturbing, developing our, what you call, harmony, understanding, and without violating the environment for others to suffer. If these qualities are not in our religion, there's no point of following any religion. Now there are free thinkers. They never say they are Buddhists or Christians or Muslims or Hindus, no label. But do you think they behave as barbarians? If you observe very carefully, some of them are far better than those so-called religious people who claim they are belong to this religion or that religion. By knowing certain things are bad, immoral, harmful, they try not to do. That is understanding. Not because of God, not because of punishment, not because of hell, Knowing these things are wrong, again, 
they do lot of services for the well-being of others to release other sufferings and troubles and problems and difficulties without expecting any reward from god they have no heaven no god no hell no rebirth no karma no soul nothing but they live as human being they so they keep away from bad thing they do lot of good thing without using any religious label why although they do not use any religious label they practice religious principles without them we are belong to this religion religious principles are there therefore not necessary to say we are buddhist that word is not important the buddha was not a buddhist <laughs> jesus was not a christian we have given this label for them we must try to be good to do good as much as possible then we are very good religious people you can give any label it is try to be good to do good as much as possible then we are very good religious people you can give any label it is immaterial on the other hand among the followers of other religions christians muslims and hindus we have seen we have been associating with them some of them are better than buddhist they are kindness compassion honesty all the good qualities they have developed quality in their mind therefore we cannot say we buddhists are the good people religious people in this world that is egoism try to avoid this then we can keep away from hostility discrimination to live peacefully with others recently i was invited to give a talk at international islamic university on buddhism after my talk somebody got up and asked why buddhists do not believe in god i have who told you who told you that buddhists do not believe in god you are wrong buddhist concept on god is different not like christians or muslims or hindus but buddhist concept is different otherwise no one can say buddhists do not believe in god and anyway, my topic will be next week will be that <laughs> for you to understand you must never say as buddhists we don't believe in god you create unnecessary misunderstanding hostility discrimination why do you want to create this i went to attend an international islamic conference invited us to as it which is there as soon as i enter into that building a muslim group who have come from another country i think they have never seen a buddhist monk in their life <laughs> yeah straight away he said do you believe in god i said why not <laughs> no argument <laughs> because that is not the way to ask a question Uh, where are you coming from what is your religion we are very happy to see you here by the way may i know what is your concept on god and uh, that is the the what you call cultured way 
What state we had the lingos? I see the mentality. When people talk religion so seriously into their mind, they develop some sort of egoism, pride, and they are superior to others. We shouldn't maintain in that way. So again, let us come there. <coughs> Why religion is needed? Human mind can understand. This is not the first and the last life. Others have no such idea. They do not know anything about the next life hereafter. Only human beings. If we can understand this, it is our duty to prepare for the next existence. Uh, that is why we need a religion. Otherwise, we do not know. Now, there are millions of human beings in many parts of the world who are dying, starving, without food. Millions of human beings have no shelter. Their birth and death both take place at the pavement or roadside or under the tree or open areas during the summer and winter, rain season. Also they have to spend their life like this. Then who are these human beings? If people believe all these human beings are created by the God. Then why did God create those millions of innocent people to suffer for nothing? Is there any reason? If he has created, it is not his duty to provide food and clothing and shelter and their requisites. When a father produce few children. He keep quiet without doing anything. Children every day must come and need our father, we want food. Father, we want clothing. Father, we, we want our books. Is that the way? Is that the duty of the father? Then who created them to suffer like this or nothing? Nobody created them. This is a living example for us. Compare our way of life and their way of life. How fortunate we are and how unfortunate they are. All are human beings. What is the cause? No doubt. They had little bit of good karma to be born as humans. But they have not accumulated enough good karma for them to experience in their next existence. Now that is the good lesson for all of us. Now we are experiencing good effect of our good karma. Yes. Definitely. When you compare with others who suffer. Again we are paying for what we have done. Certain bad things. In simple language it says like this. We are the result of what we were. We will be the result of what we are. Children also can understand this. Remember this. We are the result of what we were. If we are fortunate, uh, that means we have definitely have some good deeds, meritorious deeds during our last birth. That is why we are experiencing leading a peaceful, happy life. If our lives are miserable, they are the result of what we were. 
We have done certain bad, wicked, cruel things during the previous birth. We are paying for that. We will be the... If anything happened after our death, that is also natural. Not created by God or the Buddha or anybody else. It is natural. Setting sun here, this evening, become the rising sun in another country. Exactly like this. When the life is departed from here, come into existence somewhere else according to our karmic energy. Nobody to handle that. Remember, Life never dies. People are scared of death, not knowing what happened to them. This is not our life. This is the body, this is the house. Life is living in this house. This is the shelter to accommodate our life. Life process and mental energy Karmic energy combined together. Physical body support for that life to exist. When this body is going on decaying, 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 decaying and collapse, the life goes away. Cannot live anymore here. That is called death. I cannot understand why people are scared of death. That is not the end of our life. That is the beginning of our life. When your passport is expired, why are you scared to renew your passport? <laughs> Please remember, life never dies. There is nothing to die in life, it is an energy. Just now I mentioned life can exist in a certain world system without a physical body. We cannot understand that. But here in this part of the universe, life cannot exist without shelter. And this is the shelter. So this shelter decay and collapse. So while we are living here, we have four elements here. In this heat, and what do you call motion, solidity, fluidity. Four elements are here. Then the mental energy, four kinds of mental energies combined together. Then the life started to function. After our death, two elements also immediately disappear. No heat, no wind. No breathing, no temperature, disappear. Now remains only two elements here. If keep this for some time, fleet also disappear. There remain only solid, solidity, bones. When you bury this, say after 75 years, dig and see nothing, only earth. Four elements absorb into the same element again. Then, when the life formation started in the mother's womb, these elements, cosmic energies, all those things support, combine, work together to build up. That is life. By knowing this, it is our duty to prepare while we are living here. If we depart from here without carrying anything in our hand for us to maintain our life, uh, then the life becomes very miserable. Here in this part of the world, actually we are very fortunate. Because there is a saying of the Buddha, 
इन मंगल सूत्र पति रूप देश वासोच पुब्बे च कत पुण्यता दोस हु हैव डन सम मेरिटोरियस डीड्स ड्यूरिंग देयर प्रीवियस बर्थ दे गेट द चांस टू बी बोर्न इन सर्टेन कंट्रीज सर्टेन प्लेसेस वेयर दे कैन मेंटेन देयर लाइफ विदाउट फेसिंग so many troubles and problems and calamities and violence and disturbances how fortunate we are in certain countries earthquake volcanic eruption millions of people dying and become what do you call running here and there and searching then Two years ago, in North, uh, what do you call Korea? North Korea, two millions died without food. Go to certain other countries. Many people have no piece of cloth to cover their nakedness. Here in this country. before the chinese new year people bring lorry load of old clothing and dump in the temple when you open them you can see most of them are not old out of fashion <laughs> they throw them away how we enjoy our life in this part of the world are uh, then india the temperature in certain area 60 degrees can you imagine here when you come to 34 we grumble cannot tolerate 34 60 degrees 1500 died last few weeks heat and the winter again how many died during the winter they cannot tolerate so when you study one by one one by one compare with all the others and countries where people are suffering in millions like iraq and many other countries violence bloodshed now still no food no water no light no house no job nothing 24 millions human being in iraq suffering compare our way of life how fortunate we are ah uh, that is why the buddha says those who have done some meritorious deeds in their life they get the chance to be born in certain countries where they can lead their life peacefully only religion can tell us this scientists do not know anything about this religion can do many thing which scientists cannot do ah uh, this is the most important thing as human beings we need the religion because we can understand the nature of our life we can mold we can prepare for the next existence after that again we can start from there but continuity is there when you develop your knowledge understanding and the virtues and principles and morals this will become your habit your nature after death this all these good qualities continue mental energy and the life process are these all these good qualities continue mental energy and the life process are absorbed into this therefore it is not actually new life next one only elements and cosmic energies come and combine but all the ingredients we have taken from here mental energy 
life process we carry from here. The Buddha has mentioned this. Vinyanam matukuchisming okkamati. When this one is rotten, our consciousness transmit, depart from here. In that consciousness, we have avidya, trusna, karma, upadana, bhava, craving, and what you call ignorance, and karmic energy, and attachment, karma formation, all are in our consciousness. We do not know that. We think only mental energy. Uh, that is why this can transmit this one depart from here. We'll be landed in a place according to our karmic energy. Karmic energy divert either this way or this way or this way. Uh, by knowing this through our religion or through, from any religion, this is not the first and the last. We must prepare. We cannot carry our property, what we have accumulated within this lifetime. Artha gruhe nirtante smasane mitra bandha. Everything what we have collected during our lifetime, we have to drop here, cannot carry anything with us. A very rich man who strongly believes that if people put anything into his coffin, he will get it back in the next life. They still there are some people. Do you know, during the Chinese funeral, I have seen, when the undertakers are going to close the coffin, they are the family members to look at the wall, this way. Don't look at Do you know the secret? Those days, they used to put many valuable things into the coffin. When they are watching the wall, they take out William and put everything in there. <laughs> Still you believe this. <laughs> Still you, still you are watching the world. <laughs> so, what happened? Very rich man who strongly believed that he can get back many things in the next life, he has given 100,000 to his doctor, 100,000 to his priest, I don't know which religion, and 100,000 to his lawyer. Ask them to put this money into the coffin in front of others. So this man is dead. Three of them also came. Then the doctor. Yes, no doubt he has given me 100,000. He has not settled my medical bills. <laughs> I have taken 25,000. And the balance he put in the coffin. Then the priest came. Yes, he has given 100,000. You know the place of worship in our... Uh, I cannot see the church or temple, I can use the word. The leaking, I spent 30,000 to repair the roof. The balance I put. Then the lawyer came. You know, lawyers are very honest people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they never bluff me. <coughs> lawyer came and scolded both. You have disappointed this poor man. Don't worry. I am going to replace what they have spent. And my hundred thousand and what they have spent, he issued account pay cash check. <laughs> Put it the <laughs> <laughs> and same thing will happen to you also if you believe that you get something hereafter, anything put into the coffin. 
You know, Chinese are very clever people. <laughs> they are the only people who could manage to open a bank in the hell. <laughs> <laughs> Americans who have landed on the moon still could not open a bank in the hill. <laughs> so, my dear friend, Buddhism is to open our mind to understand. Why Chinese wanted to learn Buddhism? Because more than 5,000 years old culture, philosophy, they had in China. Ancient culture, human culture on this earth. During Confucius period, that is only 80 years after the Buddha, Confucius lived. And Lao Tzu, 30 years after the Buddha. So they approach Confucius and ask, is there any life again after our death? Confucius said, still we have not learned what this life is. How do we know that there will be another life? So they could not satisfy with that. Another group came and asked, is there anything that we can do for our departed ones? Confucius said, still we have not learned how to fulfill our duty to living one. What can we do for the dead one? That is why they have decided to go to India. Two thousand years ago, they have taken so much of troubles and pains. You know, the going from China to India at that time, by crossings and rivers and desert and jungles and such a long period. If 50 people started, maybe 20 people reached the others die on the way. But they had courage. After going there, they studied, they observe very carefully how they practice religion. Because there were three religions very active. Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism. Observe very carefully how they practice these three religions. Then they noticed to practice Hinduism or Jainism they must follow Indian tradition, Indian custom, Indian way of life. Otherwise, they cannot practice. But to practice Buddhism, it is not necessary to follow Indian tradition. That means Chinese knew it is not necessary for Chinese to become Indian to practice Buddhism. <laughs> They learned only <laughs> That means Chinese knew it is not necessary for Chinese to become Indian to practice Buddhism. <laughs> they learned only Buddhism, gone back and introduced without any difficulty in China. Chinese culture and Buddhism. Combined together. No difficulty. But other religions, no one can practice in this way. Now, if you be become a follower of another religion tomorrow, there are many things you have to give up. They say, cannot. According to our religion, you cannot eat this, you cannot go there, you cannot do this. But if others come and join into Buddhism, there is nothing to change. If they are not doing any wicked and cruel and immoral things, nothing else for them to change. That means the Buddha has given due credit to culture and tradition. 
He mentioned in one of his discourses, Kalam Sutra. He said, if your culture and traditions are meaningful, significant, don't think this is an age-old tradition. Follow them. If they are meaningless, useless, don't follow them, thinking this is our own tradition. Uh, this is the advice given by the world. So Chinese, let us take Malaysia. Up to 14th century, here, yeah, Malaya, only two religions, Buddhism and Hinduism. When the chief of Malacca, I heard he was a Hindu, embraced Islam. After that, the whole country become a Muslim country. Even the name of Buddhism completely disappeared from this country. Nearly 500 or 600 years. Then, Chinese started to migrate. 19th century, 20th century, and settled down here. Uh, they are the ones who have started Buddhist way of life in Malaya. After that, of course, they followed only Chinese tradition, Chinese culture, Chinese way of life to practice Buddhism. Uh, then, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, they also come and join with them, then modify it. The Buddhism that we are practicing in this country today, mixture of Chinese, Sri Lankan, Thai and Burmese. Today 19% of the population follow this religion. Second major religion in this country. So, the freedom that we have to think freely and to follow our traditions and customs freely and religious belief not as law or commandment but not because of fear of punishment but knowing these things are wrong, immoral, wicked, harmful then we try not to do. We try our best not to do through our understanding. Again, certain things are very important to release other suffering, suffering from sicknesses, old age, poverty and fear and worries. It is our duty to release them. These are meritorious deeds. Not simply by worshipping and praying. Meritorious deeds. There was a well-known Hindu, Swami Vivekananda, well-known name all over the world. One day, when he visited a place, he saw a group of people in front of an image, beating drums and blowing trumpet, burning incense, and singing and singing. Then he came and asked, what are you doing here? And they told, we are praying and worshipping to this God for blessing. Then Vivekananda said, throw away all this rubbish. Do you think you can bluff God beating your drum and blowing your trumpet? <laughs> throw away all this rubbish. Go out. There are so many who need your service, who are having sicknesses, who are dying, who are starving, who have no shelter, go and do something to release their suffering. Then you get the blessing from God, not by beating your drum. The Buddha also wanted to introduce this type of religious way of life. You can say you worship, you can say you pray, you can say you perform also rice. Buddha was not interested in all this. If you try to be good, if you try to do good for the well-being of others, uh, then you really respect the Buddha, you follow the Buddha, then you are real Buddhist. You are following 
real religious way of life. Nine ten. What time did we start? <laughs> Good. So why not we allow them to ask some questions? Thank you, Chief Reverend. We shall now open to the floor for question and answer. Please use the two mics provided in the house. Books. Buddhists. Uh -huh. They claim themselves the Buddhists, but in actual fact, the definitions of Buddhist and Taoism, there's a definition on that. And manners and duties, all are there. Therefore, whatever they practice, they cannot do away with them. Deeply penetrated in their mind as Chinese culture. Therefore, there are certain occasions which are very embarrassing. And the Christian and Muslims ridicule our way of doing certain things, especially Chinese funerals. When they watch what they are doing, they really condemn and bad names. Buddhism get the bad name. But if they can practice this thing, this is our Chinese tradition, Chinese custom, not Buddhism. And religious aspect is separate. Uh, then no one can say they are bad Buddhists. Customs and tradition and religion. Later, when they are uh, understanding, maturity, experience, knowledge, develop, they can minimize, they can reduce as much as possible what they can. Uh, that is the only. Otherwise, you cannot throw them away at once just because of Buddhism. Thank you. I think from your talk, it gives me the impression that for some system of belief to be classified as a religion, it has to deal with after death or the next life. I think uh, all human beings being intelligent, they also follow a certain style of life or way of life. And uh, just as you say, the free thinkers don't call themselves religious people. They just say they are free thinkers. So for something to be labeled a religion, you probably will say it has to do with the issue of the next life. They just say they are free thinkers. So for something to be labeled a religion, you probably will say it has to do with the issue of the next life or the afterlife. But even the extent of the human intelligence, as you said in your lecture, and the progress of science, nowadays we have this concept of uh, cloning. One day, in your opinion, if we perfected cloning, do we really need the concept of God? Do we then really need a religion? Since by the technique of cloning, we don't die. I can create one of myself, one of another self. Then what is the place of religion then? Thank you. Good news regarding this cloning and the Buddhist concept on cloning. Then I mentioned there is no reason for us to object, to go against this. Because Buddhism is a religion that which encourages people to use their intelligence, not to interrupt. So next day, this item appeared in the paper. Christianity? No. Islam? No. Hinduism? No. Buddhism? Yes. <laughs> I got so many telephone calls appreciating for making such brave statement. Because our own karma that we have committed, the Buddha says, by using our intelligence, we can overcome the bad effect. 
This is the nature of intelligence. So when human beings are going to discover certain things through their scientific knowledge, all the other religions objected at the beginning. This is against belief in God. Buddhism is the only religion never discouraged. They can, if they misuse by adapting an immoral or wicked method, ah, then Buddhism can stand against them. If they use this intelligence to discover many things that human beings could not discover yet, in time to come, my dear friend, they will discover so many things. Because others object, saying it is not the duty of human being to create some living being, it is the duty of the God. Therefore, you cannot create. Allow God to create. If they can create, what harm is there? Let them create, let them produce. In time to come, they may produce better one than the one created by the God. <laughs> Thank you. Can we have the next question? Where is our mind located? Oh. Simple. Short. Simple answer is never mind. It's not a joke, actually. People had this belief for a long period that our mind is in our heart. That is how they have created some word, kind-hearted, cruel-hearted. They think that the heart is responsible for this mental attitude. Later, when medical science was so advanced, they realized mind is not located in the heart, it is in our brain. They maintain this belief. Mind is in our brain. When psychologists started to develop by studying the nature of the mind, they come to know mind is not located in the brain. The mind is not located in any particular organs in our body. Mind is just like electricity. When engine and dynamo work together, friction create electricity. But this electricity is not located in the engine or dynamo, not come out from this machine. The friction creates electron. Exactly in the same manner, when the heart and the brain work together, mental energy is produced. Now this energy is spread all over the body, not located in any particular area. The Buddha, he mentioned about the mind. Durangamang ekacharang asarirang guhasaya the nature of the mind. Durangamang there is no any other kind of energy in this world that which can run so rapidly other than the human's mind. We can radiate our mental energy throughout the universe. When lightning strike, we have no time to see appear, disappear. But the mental energy can run thousand times faster than lightning. Yes, I would say, no, any other kind of energy other than the human mind. Durangama. Ekachara. The mind has no companion. Mind exists alone. Two minds never work together. Husband and wife married about 75 years ago. Still, husband does not know the nature of the mind of the wife. Wife doesn't know the nature of the mind of the husband. Uh, this is the nature of the mind. No one can understand the nature of the mind. Ek work alone. Asari rang. That means there's no some sort of formation 
visible or tangible omission to say this is mine. It is invisible. Guha Sayam, setting in a cave. Ah, this is the word they have taken to think the mind must be in the heart or in the brain. Here the whole body. Mind uh, spread all over our physical body but produced through the frictions of brain and the heart. Then energy exists. Therefore not located in any particular place. Thank you. That I uh, have like an answer is we as human beings are all the time trying to do various things for our benefit, for, for our children's benefit. So as a result, the things we do daily doesn't really meet what the Gautama has uh, preached to us. So for a doctor, though he practices medicine, he carries out abortion, an accountant, though he's honest, not necessarily presenting the facts to the true figure. A politician promises, knowing very well he might not achieve it. A uh, shopkeeper sells goods which he knows are not the right goods. Where do we get ourselves to balance between what we are doing and what we should do so that we can regularize our life? to fix the mind, to create some sort of determination not to do this or to do this. Today we decide, but tomorrow we do it again. Changes take place. Environment, temptation, irritation, <laughs> Good by ourselves and not take any, make any effort to take action against the evil that is being done by others. Should we mind our own business? Because as I see, the world is deteriorating rapidly because too many people are minding their own business. And the politicians have become moral masters. They decide what is right and wrong. What should Buddhists do in this case? Thank you. Try your best, as much as possible that you can, to guide others, to correct others within your capacity. If you think it is very difficult for you to do that, then you can keep away from them and lead a life where you can maintain peace and satisfaction. You understand? Try your best as much as possible. If you come to know they are not working, they are not ready to listen, don't bother. Without harming, without criticizing, without condemning, keep away from them and lead a lonely life. Maintaining peace and satisfaction. Thank you. Uh, is the mind can it relax through meditation, or can we avoid stress through meditation? Thank you. Meditation. Ayang vikhave maggo sattanang visuddhya. In Satipatthana Sutra, way of mindfulness, the Buddha says, there is only one method in this world that we have to practice, Sattanam Visuddhya, to maintain the purity in our mind. Soka Paridvanam Samatikamaya to reduce your worries and fear and suspicions in our mind. Dukkha domanasanam attakamaya. Develop the mind to tolerate 
physical and mental pain and sufferings and disturbances. Nyayasa adhigamaya, for the attainment of sainthood. Nibbanasa sachikiriyaya, attainment of final salvation. Only one method. What is this, this method? In English we say meditation. But Buddha used the word bhavana. The word meditation does not give the same meaning. Bhavana. Bhavana means the development of the mind. Now education is not the development of the mind. We learn so many things but no development in the mind. Anger, jealousy, grudge, ill will and evil thought all are there. No development. So in the same manner, meditation means development of the mind by what you call suppressing all the evil, wicked, cruel, harmful things, by cultivating the mind, by concentrating on kindness, compassion and unity and harmony, understanding, it will become the development of the mind. There is no another method. Scientists cannot contribute anything for that. Only meditation. Meditation has no religious label. We cannot say Buddhist meditation, Hindu meditation, Christian meditation or Muslim. Meditation is meditation. Meditation is just like medicine. We can give any label, but medicine is medicine. Anyone can practice meditation without any religion. Don't try to glorify our method is higher than others, our vipassana is higher than samatha, samatha is higher than vipassana. They, they try to glorify and mislead, create misunderstanding. So that is the only method. There is no another method. Thank you. We have taught us uh, on the Buddhist view on the feature of trance. As I have experienced uh, in Christianity, uh, uh, in Islam, as well as Hinduism, people used to fall into trance. Uh, does Buddhism have this sort of feature? Thank you. It was getting to trance. Mm. People, they fall into trance, isn't it? Mm. So what is your view on this sort of features? Yes, the Buddhism has, has explained, actually. When the five senses are not active with the mind, when the mind stops thinking, creating mental objects, uh, then the mind penetrates into subconscious mind. Subconscious mind projects so many things. Uh, that is why they behave entirely a different way. Subconscious mind. Neither God or Buddha or anybody else is influencing the mind. Subconscious mind. Thank you very much, Chief Reverend. Ladies and gentlemen, much as I like to continue, we have come to the end of day one program. Sabityo yajjantu sabbiro go inasatu Mati bhattan tarayo sukhi divayu ko bhava Bhavatu sabbha mangalam rakkantu sabbha devata Sabbha buddha nubhavena sada sutti bhavam tute Bhavatu sabbha mangalam rakkantu sabbha devata Sabda Dhamma Nubhave Nasada Sutti Bhantute Bhavatu Sabda Mangalam Rakkantu Sabda Devata Sabda Sangha Nubhave Nasada Sutti Bhantute Nakhatve Akhabhuta Nang Papagga Nivarana Paritasa Nubhave Na Antwa Te Sang Upadve Yandu Nimitam Avamangalanche Yuchamana Purakuna Suraddo Papagavodu Supinanga Kantam Buddha Nubhave Na Vinasamintu Dhamma Nubhave Na Vinasamintu 
సంగానుభావేన వినాశమెంతు దుఃఖపత్తాచ నిదుఃఖ భయపత్తాచ నిభయ శోకపత్తాచ నిశోక అంతు సబ్దేపి పానిను సబ్దే బుద్ధ బలపత్త పచ్చే కానం చయం బలం అరహంతానం చేజేన ప్రం వందామి సబ్సో for good health and peace of life to all of you thank you